Hi guys! If you are planning a renovation for your kitchen or you just need to level up the storage and the way that you use your kitchen, today's video is for you. Today I'm going to go over some interesting ideas that you may want to incorporate into your kitchen redesign, remodel, new kitchen, or you know, just level up some of your existing storage solutions that you have going on. What I love about these ideas is some of them you can just incorporate with existing cabinetries by buying different hardware and things, but they're really great ways of you know, rethinking your kitchen layout and getting it to function the absolute best way possible. So I personally really love a kitchen that just maximizes its storage solutions. Honestly, I watch that show Home Edit and I just see all those like containers and storage ideas and I just drool every single time. I really like trying to create a space that just functions well because I truly believe if things have a home and a designated space, you're more likely to put things in those spaces so that you can find them when you need them. The first idea off of this storage solution is such a really interesting idea. It's something that I've seen for years. I've never done it in a kitchen that I've designed. I don't do a ton of kitchen designs. I'm doing more now, but it's one of those items that I'm like, oh, I really want to utilize this somewhere because it seems just so intuitive to use this really typically unused space. And that is at the kick plate at the bottom, like under your cabinets, it's in that space. So we call this the toe kick drawer. I know, like genius, right? What I really love about this particular storage solution is if you have a small kitchen footprint and you don't have a lot of cabinetry or cupboard space, this is really taking advantage of a small underutilized space that you can then use for things like baking sheets or muffin tins or the dog bowls or anything that's slim, right? You have about four inches, even less once you have the like drawer that pulls out. So let's say three inches of space. It's not a huge amount of space, but just think of some of those things in your kitchen that maybe you don't use very often, but are pretty slim in profile. Baking sheets are the number one thing that I think of or cutting boards or, you know, anything that's just thin. What I thought was really interesting as well, if you're doing a custom kitchen, you could probably change the height of that and have like a little bit of a bigger drawer down there. I only say that because I have done a kitchen where we actually had the counter height higher than a typical counter height, just because they were tall people and they really wanted a higher counter. So nothing's to say that it has to be, you know, fixed heights with certain things. So that's when you might have a little bit more space underneath, but that's, you know, like a bigger scale renovation. But no matter, you know, how you plan on using your kitchen, it's a really interesting little creative additional storage that you can bring into an otherwise really underutilized space. I actually did see one where they had wine bottles and I thought, I'm, I don't think that's the best place to store wine bottles. However, really clever if you need like a little hidden wine drawer somewhere. I kind of liked it. Obviously it'd have to be a little bit higher for that, but I thought it was cool. Anyways, I digress. I really love the toe kick. Something that I would like to see in one of my kitchens that I design one of these days. Cause yeah, super cool. Anyways, next point. I'm still on the toe kick. I have a little bit of an obsession, I'm not gonna lie, with this underutilized space because I think that's one of the things when you're renovating or you're coming up with a design for a kitchen space is you really wanna think, how do I maximize all of this space? This one isn't so much about storage, but it's about cleaning. So this particular addition to your kitchen renovation I've done this one before for a client. So if you have a central vac system, I feel like they were a lot more popular at one point. We don't hear about them going in as much, but a lot of people have them existing. So typically if you have this existing, however, I do believe when I was researching, I wanted to find images, of course, for this portion of the video. I think there's some that it's more of like, um, it kind of sucks it into its own little system. So you don't necessarily have to have a full, you know, HVAC system. And you're probably wondering, what am I talking about? Cause I haven't actually explained it yet. But basically when you're in the kitchen, there tends to be a lot of crumbs or food or different things that fall on the floor. I don't know about you. Like when I had a dog, oh my goodness, there was just crumbs everywhere. So this, you just sweep it into this little sleeve, sliver, sleeve, sliver, 
and it sucks it in. So if you have a central vac, you hook it right into the central vac system. You, it just like you use your brush, you open it and then you sweep the stuff in and out it goes. And then you close it again. I do believe there's a unit that's kind of self-contained that hides underneath that little toe kick space. And then you just like pull it out and empty it every once in a while. Either way, there's, I feel like I'm always dealing with crumbs in the kitchen. Like the rest of my house will be fine, but the kitchen floor just gets dirty, dirty, dirty. And I sweep all the time. So I love this. I've done this, like I said before, in a kitchen. It was great because you just sweep it, gone through a little hole. You don't really have to think about it. I love it. It's perfect use of that space. Okay, let's, you know, get up off the floor and like move up onto the counter space and get into something that's a little bit more eye level. So one of the things is small appliances and gadgets and gizmos. I feel like we all have lots of stuff that we use in the kitchen when we're cooking, when we're making coffee, when we're mixing things. There's never a shortage of small kitchen appliances. Now, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have some things on your counter. Like I do have my coffee maker out. I actually now have an air fryer, which I keep out just out of convenience, but it, I don't really have a lot of stuff on my kitchen counter because I don't like the look of clutter. So I keep it pretty bare. I think I have three items and I have a pretty good size kitchen. So, you know, I personally like to keep things as much off my counter as possible so that when I'm using it, I have lots of prep space. And the reason I point that out is I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have this really genius storage trick. And that is an appliance garage. I really highly, you know, advocate for adding this in. If you're doing a renovation, it's great because you can plan everything around what you already have or kind of the type of items that you use typically like on a regular basis. If you have an existing kitchen, maybe there's a way to, you know, rework a cabinet to be able to do this. But an appliance garage essentially is a place that houses your appliances, but even more specifically, if you can have power in that spot. So what's lovely is that say you have a KitchenAid stand mixer. Now they are beautiful. A lot of people like to have them on the counter or an air fryer or your coffee maker or a toaster or even a microwave. Like it really depends on how much space you want to dedicate to it, but you can have these all behind cabinet doors, whether they're roll-ups, fold-ins, just regular doors that are hidden within a space. But basically it's like this great space that everything's there, plugged in, ready to use when you need to use it. Or if it's not plugged in, at least sized accordingly to fit all the items, which is what I have. It doesn't have plugs, but it is an appliance garage where all of those kind of big clunkier mixing type things that just take up a lot of space and they need their own dedicated space. If you're doing anything to your kitchen, I highly, highly recommend an appliance garage. You will not regret it. So just a brief pause here. If you guys are enjoying the content in today's video, please hit that thumbs up button down below. I greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel. It helps me know that things are, you know, you're enjoying it and you know, just helps the algorithm and all that jazz. So thank you in advance and yes, hit that thumbs up. All right, back to the video. Okay, if you love to cook, I love to cook. If you love to cook, there are certain things that you're always grabbing. Spices are one of them, oils are another one. You know, there are certain things that you want to have easy access to when you are making food. One of the inserts for cabinets that I absolutely love is a pull-out spice rack. Now this is awesome because you're able to see everything. I personally, I'm always digging through the spices. They are close to where I need them, but they are not a pull-out drawer. The pull-out drawer makes it just so much easier to find things. Spice racks are great because a lot of times they're narrow, so you end up basically getting like two rows and you can see all your spices really easily. Also, usually you can integrate spices and your oils, or you can have two separate ones, one for oils, one for spices. Oh, it's so nice to utilize just a small amount of space to a pull-out drawer that has your spices all lined up. I love a pull-out spice rack. Thinking about that vertical storage solution, much like the spices is cutting boards. I find cutting boards, sheet pans, anything that's flat and long and awkward and usually in a multitude of sizes 
you never have like the best spot to put them. Creating a dedicated either pull-out drawer that you can actually put those in, very similar to the spice rack drawer, except specifically for tall, long, awkward kitchen items like cutting boards is great to have a dedicated space for. Another really great conversion is if you do have enough space in your kitchen that you can, you know, kind of give up a cabinet space of, you can do a really cool insert that they just slide in and you can put all of your flat um, bakeware, cutting boards, etc. you know, sheet pans, all that stuff in their muffin trays. Uh, in these little slots and they're great because it just gives each one its own home and I have them I have a narrow drawer for it and they kind of like flop So you take one out and then everything starts falling over on each other So this is nice because it kind of gives just a nice narrow opening for each one and you don't end up with a whole bunch of stuff Clanging all the time. So just a simple little shelf divider is even Goes so far with this one so when you're planning your kitchen remodel or perhaps you already have the dreaded corner cabinet, I feel like at one point we loved all that extra space, but then it's just become this kind of black hole of collection items. I know we've have the, you know, lazy Susans, which is pretty common for how do you access stuff in there, you know, turns around, flips back to like the corner piece and that works just fine. But I feel like we've really come a long way with the corner cabinet and there are some really ingenious storage solutions for these cabinets. What I love is there's ways to make them almost like an appliance garage where you actually utilize this uh, hardware, Richelieu makes it. I'll include a link below. I'm sure there's other companies that make it. Richelieu is kind of the um, gold standard, I think, with kitchen uh, hardware. But it pulls out, so it pulls out from the corner and like you get two pieces that come out. So it actually becomes like just a regular rectangular shelf, but the whole unit pulls out so that you're able to access a lot more of that space and actually utilize it a lot more efficiently because obviously, you know, a circle in a square box, you have a lot of wasted space and a lot of potential for things falling in the back and you can't get it and I've been there. <laughs> so this is really great. There's a lot of really creative uh, different things for the corner that actually bring the whole space out so that you're actually able to use as much of that space as possible. So this is a great one. I really like implementing this into designs because so often you end up with that deaded, dead end corner space that you really want to find the best way to utilize that space. So this type of hardware will really get you there. So something that I don't think it's super unique or super left field, I'm sure we've all seen them, seen ones we love, is a pantry. Now, I know it sounds like kind of a no brainer, but not everybody has a pantry. And I'll tell you, I have never met somebody who has a pantry and doesn't love it. What I love about creating a pantry if you're in a doing a renovation is that it doesn't have to just be, you know, doors with shelves or doors with pull-out drawers, although those are all awesome, but you can actually really customize your pantry to do many of the things we've already talked about. So you can create some pull-out drawers, some fixed shelves, you can do some spice racks on the inside of the doors and allow, you know, allow that clearance in behind. You could have a bit of an appliance garage built in there. I've even seen this great one that has a little wet sink so like a bar sink just a small one as well so you have like the coffee station and a little sink and it's all behind closed doors I feel like what's nice is you can get a pantry like a butler's pantry where you have a huge room obviously that's dedicated to that behind doors which is awesome but a lot of us don't have houses that allow for that even just dedicating you know 36 inches wide, which I know can sound really big if you have a tiny space, but even a narrow one, anything, anywhere that you can add in a bit of a pantry area will go a long way. I've even seen little ones that pull out where you have a spot for your brooms and little different things that you need in a kitchen, but again, small space. So if you can de dedicate, you know, 24, 36 inches, like a double door type thing with pull out, awesome. If you can't, Honestly, a 15 inch wide full height cabinet that has some pull out to it that allows for, you know, your dried goods, your flowers, your canned goods, cereal boxes, all of those things just to have a home for them is super helpful in your kitchen. Also, side note, <laughs> 
I had a pantry in my last house. It just had the pull-out drawers, no big deal, right? Like pretty standard, basic pantry. It was great, I loved it. But I put my cans up on a shelf, a roll-out shelf. I will tell you, do not do that. <laughs> I broke that shelf. So the weight of the cans are really hard on the rollers. So you do want to either have a fixed shelf for the cans or put them on the bottom. Although I found the bottom because I had to do that after we got it fixed was a bit tedious because you kind of lose things in the back and you can't find it and it just becomes a bit of a pain in the butt just from a functional standpoint, to not put too much pressure on your cabinets, especially the hardware, try not to put too many canned goods on one. <laughs> so that is my like, do not make the same mistake I did. I think the absolute best part about creating a kitchen from scratch or working on a remodel is that you get to design something like a pantry completely how you want it. So say you entertain a lot and you have serving dishes, you can have homes dedicated to those items. That's what's super fun about designing a kitchen is you can really reflect your own personal tastes and styles and incorporate all the storage solutions that you want right in your kitchen cabinetry. I think there's so many great opportunities to you know, rework an existing kitchen just with some extra little inserts and tools. You know, you watch a lot of home I don't know, I watch a lot of home organization uh, TikToks and different things like that that show really cool hacks to kind of just manipulate one that you already have. And if you're able to incorporate them while you're building it in a renovation, you know, even better. You'll absolutely love having all those little storage solutions. So what's your favorite kitchen organization tip, tool, or idea that you have had, used, or seen that you just absolutely love? Comment below, I would love to hear it. Or if it's one of these ones, I'd love to hear that too if you really like it. Also, if you're looking for some more kitchen inspiration, I did a video recently about kitchen trends for 2023. Some of them are a little wild. They might be, you know, a little too out there for you, but I also did some classic timeless kitchens so you can check out that video over here and see if you like it. All right guys, until next time. Bye.